okay, I'm going to hit the recorder. So for those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live or if you're joining us on YouTube, just know that we have a book for you too. So the seventh caller or texter, 407-373-5959, will uh, win a free copy of your seatbelt. We're going to learn and grow together. Oh, by the way, Bill, show me your moves. <laughs> Let me get Facebook Live here going. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here. So Sue can technically start sharing right now. I'm going to share my Facebook page too. There you are. I see you now. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And if you've been tuning in for the last seven years or just came on board yesterday, welcome back. I'm so grateful for you. But if you're tuning in for the first time today, just know that I've been waiting for you. And it's a, this is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. And it is no accident that you're tuning in today because it is my sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. And I am so grateful that we are able to do that here. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal. And it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I am so grateful and I want to help you feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now, today we're giving away a book. So you may want to put this number down, 407-373-5959. That's 407 373 Five nine five nine, and the reason why I'm giving you this number right away because I'm going to be giving this away to the seventh caller or texture. It's called Nutrient Power, and so let me share a little bit about what I have to ask you some questions because I want to tap into your rational mind and what you would do. So if I were to tell you that there is a drug that would end mental behavior disorder or have a great possibility to end mental behavior disorders, would you take that drug? Hmm, probably, right? Because you've been conditioned to take a pill. But on my show, you can take a pill, you can take responsibility. And it's not that I'm against the pill, it's that I'm for doing everything we possibly can before you take this pill. But what if I told you that this drug was optimal nutrition? What would you do then? Would you eat differently? Would you change the way you eat? Well, we are fortunate because the author of Nutrient Power, and his name is William J. Walsh, PhD, he's going to share how we can heal our biochemistry and heal our brain. And so you can find Dr. Walsh at walshinstitute.org. That's Walsh Institute. Dot org. But let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Bill Walsh. He is the president and founder of a nonprofit, Walsh Research Institute. But prior to that, what started as what you would call, what I would call in my church, a prison ministry, has turned out to become a 30-year-plus lifelong research just passion. And he's been able to research methylation disorders and nutrient imbalances associated with mental disorders. So this includes diagnosis of autism, behavioral disorders, ADHD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, and Alzheimer's disease. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Dr. Bill Walsh is here to do just that. Welcome, Bill, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Well, good morning, Lillian. 
I am grateful that you're with us and I'm grateful that you're going to be able to share this powerful information. Share a little bit about your background and what started as a prison ministry has led you into the passion of your life. Well, it really all started by accident. I was a scientist at Argonne National Laboratory doing research on uh, nuclear fuel reprocessing and other kinds of boring things. <laughs> and uh, I, I, that was a time when the, most of my friends were volunteering to do something. It was mm -hmm. a time of the Peace Corps. Um, so I decided to get involved with trying to do something in the area of, of crime and violence. Mm. And, I, and I decided that if I was going to make any impact at all, I should go straight to the people most likely to commit a crime. And that was people leaving prison. And near me was one of America's three uh, largest and, and probably most dangerous prisons, Stateville Penitentiary. So I became a volunteer there. And um, it actually started by accident when I was, I was president of the Argonne chess team. And uh, we... We scheduled a game there, and they, uh, their 4,000 inmates uh, had a contest to see who were the best players. Wow. I brought 12 PhD scientists to play their best players. The guy I played had just come off death row, and uh, he was having a tough time, and I volunteered to help him. And then he looked me in the eye and said, do you, do you really mean that? And I said, yeah. So he went off and wrote a long list with another friend of things they needed two pages. Wow. And I spent the next 18 years of my life working on his list, uh, helping them with um, the, the recreation department was down. They had poor mental, they had very poor medical help. Uh, they they uh, just had so many needs that were striking. Uh, within two years, I had 125 volunteers in my program, which was called the Prisoner Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. And the, my education came when we started an ex-offender program. We learned that if they, when they really needed help was when they got out. Because many of them were hungry and homeless. And a family and the, nobody wanted to hire them. They were afraid of them. And, and we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Bill Walsh when we return with Nutrient Power. Will we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com? We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, no, 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 Facebook Live or YouTube later on. The number, I'm going to write it down. If you call or text, just let me know that you're watching 407. Let me write this down 373 5959. I'm going to write this and be the seventh. Let me write this down. Seventh caller or texter. Just let me know that you've, are you watching on YouTube or, or Facebook Live? Win a copy of Nutrient Power. I should have done that before our show, but our time just escapes me. Okay, so I'm going to send this to you guys. And so I hope that um, Sue is able to share as well so that all of us can... Uh, be a part of this and learn more. When I heard you speak at the ACIM conference, Dr. Walsh, uh, or Bill, as I'm not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, he's asked me to call him Bill, um, I was blown away. I even stopped writing notes. I couldn't write any more notes because as I was writing, I felt like I was missing out on this powerful information. So um, I know that I mentioned ADHD, and you're talking about anger and all these depressive disorders, and also the, the emotional stability of the individual. But do you also work with many of the people who have dyslexia as well? Did you notice the commonality with dyslexia? Uh, absolutely. And we found certain chemical imbalances that we can detect with uh, blood and urine testing that are associated with dyslexia. And it has a lot to do with the, uh, with the hippocampus system mm -hmm. and has a lot to do with, with uh, nutrients such as B6 and zinc. We find that most people who have dyslexia and have a reading disorder and don't enjoy reading and have trouble remembering what they've just read mm -hmm. uh, are, are B6 deficient because of a, of, a, of a chemical imbalance that we call pyrrole disorder. Wow. So, and we have a treatment for that. Friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here waiting for you. You can okay. text Lillian oh. McGurk.
for Libra. You're still on private, Dr. Walsh. 373-5959. Page that again. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. Today's teacher is Dr. Bill Walsh. He has asked me to call him Bill. I don't want to sound disrespectful. He's got so much experience and knowledge and wisdom. And so for those of you who are taking medication for depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, um, oh my gosh, I went through a list, bipolar, uh, ADHD, you may want to consider listening to this autism behavioral disorders so the book is called nutrient power nutrient power it's this revised version this is a revised and updated version be the seventh caller or texter 407-373-5959 that's 407-373-5959 today i'm hoping that we'll get as much information i promise you that if we can't get as much information, we're going to beg him to come back because there's just too much that we will be able to cover today. Dr. Washer, Bill, as you are going to this prison ministry, you're meeting this man who was amazing as a brilliant mind, just came off of, of death row. Yeah. You're going there out of the kindness of your heart to give back and you end up finding your passion there. Very quickly, because we, we don't have much time, as you are learning about these inmates and their needs, you realize that now when they're being released, they need more and more help. So what was it that you discovered? What has your research shown of people that were in jail and when it comes to the mind and healing the, the body um, naturally? Well. We were really surprised to find out when we started meeting with, with uh, criminals and as they got out of prison, we met the families that had, and we learned that they said, especially the mothers said they were different from the time they were born. Mm. That, that they were, by the time they were two years old, they were oppositional, defiant. And a lot of them were even harming the family pets. And the family was horrified at their little child's behavior. And I found a lot of other, the, the siblings, brothers and sisters might be just fine, but this one child was different. And the parents, many of them had tried to do everything they could to help this child, and yet they wound up in prison. And they, the family said they thought that from the time they were born, they were headed for the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. And I think in a way they might have been right. So we began wondering, what's the cause of a behavior disorder? So we started doing research. Since I was a researcher with uh, 4,000 other engineers and, and, and scientists, researchers, we started doing blood chemistry of these violent people and the ex-convicts. And we found out that their body chemistry, some of their basic factors in blood and urine chemistry were very different from the rest of the population. So mm. that's how we started. And, we, and I, I got the, uh, the good fortune to run into the world's leading nutritional scientist named Dr. Carl Pfeiffer out of Princeton, New Jersey, who gave a lecture at Argonne National Laboratory he got interested in my work, and then we started a 12-year collaboration where I would send him uh, violent people fresh out of the prison or violent children, and we would do a medical procedure, and, which he had developed, and that's, that's really how we got started. What medical procedure was that without getting into too much? Well, it, the, the whole question was, what neurotransmitters are misbehaving? Uh -huh. And he had a system for doing blood and urine testing and uh, with special tests and he could identify nutrient imbalances. Many of them had a metal metabolism disorder. Maybe their copper was elevated or their zinc was incredibly low or they were very low in B6 or they might have uh, a methylation disorder, uh, either overmethylated or undermethylated. And he had nutrient therapies for each one of these. He could fix these things. Wow. And so we started doing it with violent people, adults and children. And believe it or not, about 90% of the children, if they were under, say, the, under the age of 15, seem to have their lives change rather radically and quickly. And that's how we started. And uh, eventually, he told me that uh, what, what was needed was an outpatient clinic in the Midwest. And, and then I realized eventually he meant me. So I <laughs> opened, I founded a, a clinic that eventually saw 30,000 patients here in uh, Naperville, Illinois. And um, we, we expanded. We, we learned that when we were treating these mean little kids, very often they're, 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 we got reports that their scholastics got better. So then we realized we could help people with ADHD also. Mm -hmm. And then as we went on, we uh, added schizophrenia and, and the other disorders. 
So you had mentioned that, and I heard you say that as you were testing the blood with a Dr. Pfeiffer, you found that they were the, their blood and the, the component of the blood was different than the rest of the population, but was it similar to each other? Well, there were different types. We found four completely different versions of behavior disorders. We found that in depression, we learned, we now have seen 3,600 people with, with depression. We find there are five completely different conditions that psychiatry calls depression. And they all have different neurotransmitters misbehaving. They all need completely different treatment programs. I, I presented that at the uh, annual meeting of the American Psychiatric Association a few years ago. And um, I got quite a bit of interest from, from psychiatrists. You know, that is one of the things that I've always had an issue with that psychiatry can prescribe without diagnosis, not diagnosis without, you know, if I want to know if I have diabetes, I need to get my blood sugar or thyroid. I, there's different ways that there's measurements, some tools. The psychiatry doesn't necessarily have a tool before they can prescribe a medication. No, they don't. We, we have a, tr a training program where we, we teach, teach doctors how to do this, how to, how to do the testing and treatment. And our most enthusiastic uh, doctors are psychiatrists. See, when a psychiatrist sees a new patient, very often they only have 30 minutes and they spend all their time wondering, hmm, uh, what drug should I give them? Mm -hmm. So what we, what we have, are able to do is we, we, they can, our doctors that are, have learned our method, they can do lab work, inexpensive lab work, find out which neurotransmitters are either too hyperactive or underactive. And, and they get a roadmap of how to help these people without even using medication. They can use it together with medication, but uh, that, 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 that seems to be really helpful. Very good, okay. So let's talk about these four versions of, of that you can pull from and know what their deficiencies, the deficiencies are and how to treat it. And I'm not suggesting that anybody treat themselves, but this is like a, a roadmap and this gives you control and a power to say, hey, this sounds like me. Perhaps this is what I need. Maybe I can go to a doctor that will help me heal and, and naturally and, and reduce my medication and work yeah. to be happy. So let's talk about the first um, variation that you, that you can talk about, depression. Okay, depression, um, the, the mainstream psychiatry has a misconception that they, uh, throughout the world, if a person is diagnosed with depression, clinical depression, the doctor believes that probably the problem is low serotonin activity. Mm -hmm. and, and so they, they give them perhaps uh, Prozac, Paxil, or, or some antidepressant medication mm -hmm. aimed at elevating uh, serotonin activity. And uh, unfortunately, um, what my database shows, I have this huge chemical database, it shows that it, that it'll only treat 52% of people with depression. Mm -hmm. And of these five types, uh, one of them is dr dramatically has a low serotonin activity problem, and they do quite well. That's about 40% of people with depression. Mm -hmm. But there are other types of depression, including uh, what I call low folate depression or overmethylation. Uh, these people get worse if you get if you try to increase their SSRIs, and and so you need to find out who a person is biochemically and with respect to their brain chemistry, and then target an individual program for them. And you know, we've been doing that now for about thirty years. And what, it, what kind of blood work testing can be done prior to taking any medication for a behavior disorder? Well, um, about about. Uh, I'd say about a third of all people we see with mental health problems have a metal metabolism disorder. It's a genetic inborn problem. And these people tend to have a, a high temper. They, it can affect their, their, uh, just their, their it, it affects their norepinephrine and their dopamine neurotransmitters. It makes radical changes in them. And, and we can detect that with serum copper, plasma zinc, uh, urine pyroles. Um, we do uh, a couple of different ways of determining what a person's methylation status is. 70% of all humans have normal methylation, but 22% are undermethylated. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm undermethylated. Uh, undermethylation is not necessarily all bad, but it does make a person prone to depression, obsessive compulsive disorders, oppositional defiant disorder, and some of the nasty things that can affect people. 
Uh, so we, we, we usually do about 30 inexpensive lab tests uh, that might cost uh, three or four hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and that can tell us that plus a medical history, because we can almost predict the chemistry once we do a medical medical history. Once we learn everything about a person, we're able to to, to uh, uh, we can almost uh, diagnose them just from the symptoms and traits that go with each of these imbalances. For example, the pyrrole disorder uh, that means almost always a reading disorder. They're late night people. They're they're not they 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 have nausea in the morning or they're not hungry for they skip breakfast maybe even skip lunch, and and they uh, they can't handle stress and so that's just one example. So the the pyral disorder you're you're saying because I was looking at uh, your book and you're talking about a zinc deficiency B six deficiency as well. That's what that is. We now know scientifically exactly what that means. It's an inborn disorder. It has to do with with um, with chemistry and your spleen and your bone marrow. And, and if you're born with a, with a mutation or something that's not, and it's quite common really, um, these people have um, too much of this, of chemicals called pyrroles that strip zinc and B6 out of your body. So all we try to do is normalize zinc levels and normalize B6 levels. And basically that's what we do with all of the imbalances. We try to normalize a person. So what is to- normal? What is normal? We know what normal is. We've studied enough normal, healthy people that we know what is the best, the best range for every one of these, these factors. So what is the best range for B6? Uh, the best range for B6 is enough B6 that, that, uh, that you don't have a reading problem. We don't, have a, we don't have a lab test for B6 directly, but we can detect B6 deficiency. And uh, if you're B6 deficient, You'll 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 have a number of symptoms associated with it, which we can correct. In, in this case, um, with factors like zinc, we know the zone is between 90 and 130 micrograms per deciliter, for, and for copper, we know it's between 80 and 100 micrograms per deciliter. And for methylation, uh, we we have a, a a range that we know is ideal for mental functioning. And so we spend our time with patients normalizing their brain chemistry and their body chemistry. And so you give them B6 until they feel it better when they're reading. And also you need to make sure that their zinc is between 90 and 130. And then the copper is 80 between, between 80 and 100. Yeah, there are very clear symptoms of B6 deficiency, just to mention that. Uh, that's okay. the one we don't directly test for. But uh, for example, uh, people that have B6 deficiency, most of them, uh, have little or no dream recall. They have difficulty mm-hmm. remembering. It's a memory issue. It has a lot to do with um, a lot of your B6s in your hippocampus where memory is formed. And, and so we need to give them enough so that we can fix that. And B6 is nice because your body gets rid of, of B6 if you have more than you need. And, and so uh, the worst we can do is if we overdose somebody a little bit, they're having maybe expensive urine. So we've done this now with uh, 30,000 people plus, and uh, we, we have only had a few minor cases of side effects, but the side effects are, are reversible. And, and you know, the side effects with taking a drug could be death. So those, those of you who would like to be the seventh caller or texter, it's called Nutrient Power, 407-373-5959. And we're going to continue our conversation off the air at, on Facebook Live, we're at Lillian's Radio Show, and on the air, we're on the radio, of course. Uh, so we'll be we continuing our conversation when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. When I heard you speak, my mouth just dropped. And um, this is information that should be right up top, right in the front page of all newspapers because there's so many people that are taking drugs that are causing um, side effects that can become, I mean, we're seeing all these people, you know, mass shootings and we're seeing all these things that are happening right now. Well, hello there, Dale. How are you? Well, good morning. Good morning. We're talking with Dr. Bill Walsh today. We are live on Facebook. And for those of you on Facebook Live who have a question for um, Dr. Walsh, you're welcome to write it down. So today we are talking about nutrient power. Dr. Bill Walsh has over 30 years experience figuring out how to make the brain normal. And um, Dale, if 
it, when you hear the stuff that he's been able to share with the world and uh, it's amazing. So we just finished talking about B6 deficiency and zinc and copper. So let's, I want to continue so that we can catch you up. And I wanted to ask you, Dale, before we get back on the air, did you want to talk about um, the new program with uh, Liberty HealthShare called lightyourliberty.com? That's just uh, an additional portal uh, for okay. people to find information. Okay. Uh, and so uh, it's really a, a way to uh, be more expansive uh, in giving people an opportunity to find out about Liberty Health Share. So oh, okay. just a, a, a window uh, to look into. Well, wait till you hear this. So, so we were talking about um, depression and the different four categories of depression. Go ahead, um, Dr. Walsh, uh, Bill, as you want me to call you. I, I, I just keep forgetting this. But um, Bill, share a little bit about, um, you had mentioned about methylation um, depression is most people assume is low serotonin, but you're saying that for the majority of the population, that may not be the case. Or in some cases, this is damaging to to take an SSRI. So right. before a psychiatrist prescribes these medications, why aren't they required to do this blood work? Well, the psychiatrists that have come to our training program know that they need to do the lab testing first and do a really good medical history and identify what type of, what phenotype of depression they have. And, um, and, and, and after doing that, they get sort of a roadmap of what to do. I mean, there, are some, there are about 40% of depressed people who do really nicely on SSRIs, as long as they can escape side effects. Um, but there are 20% of them, the ones that we call folate deficient or, mm -hmm. or overmethylated, uh, they get terribly worse. And we believe that school shootings if you look at, we've done a study of school shootings looking at the last 50 in the USA mm -hmm. uh, since 1990. And uh, out of these 50, more than 40 of these people were okay until they developed anxiety and depression and were put on an SSRI and got terribly worse. So if you, and so uh, it's, it's a case of that uh, these people have too much serotonin activity and they're made dramatically worse. It's only a few people. It doesn't happen to many, but when it happens, it can cause disaster. Yeah, absolutely. So what I was reading is that the majority of these people have something in common, whether it's low methylation or uh, high methylation, depression, anxiety, the B6, zinc, and copper. That combination you've been able to see across the board, well, right? Not it's more than just those factors. There's, okay. uh, there's more like eight or nine factors that are dominate. Uh, we've learned that despite the fact there are hundreds and hundreds of important nutrients in the body, that there are only six or seven that dominate mental problems. And, and we've learned that the reason is that these are the ones that either are involved in synthesis of neurotransmitters or functioning of neurotransmitters. And so we, we <laughs> you scared me. I I didn't wasn't planning on this. Um, Andre, make sure you give me a little cue that the, the show is starting. <laughs> I just almost jumped off my chair. Three seven three. I will introduce you in a little bit. Uh, Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. Today's teacher is Dr. Bill Walsh, and we're talking about a, a book that's been around for a while. What started off as a prison ministry became a passion for Dr. Walsh, and it's called Nutrient Power. It's heal your biochemistry and heal your brain. How many of us trust that one pill is gonna solve everybody's depressive problem. But what if there's something that's going on within you? What if that one pill, instead of making you feel better, which by the way, the side effect is depression, suicidal thoughts, makes you worse. So if you were to, willing to take a pill, if your doctor gives you a pill, would you be willing to change the way you eat as a result of 
finding out that there is a deficiency and that could change the way that your brain functions. Even, you know, we're talking about ADHD, behavioral dis disorders. We're talking about schizophrenia. Uh, let, let's see, let me, so let me give you some of this in the list. Autism, behavioral dis disorders, ADHD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease. What if there is a problem, there is a problem with the biochemistry? So today we're talking with Bill Walsh, and I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. While you're there, make sure you subscribe to the website and to my YouTube channel. Click on the icon, click on to all my social media, follow me there. Let's have this conversation. I don't want to go too much into the website. Just make sure that you're supporting our sponsors the way that they're supporting the show, that you are making an informed choice before doing anything for your body. And we're giving away Nutrition Power, be the seventh caller or texter, 407-373-5959, and take your health back. So today, um, Bill, we are talking about the different components, and we are talking off the air about the different things to look for in our blood work. The blood work that you said is simple. You can, you can do this simple blood work, but what are some of the nine factors that you were mentioning off the air? Well, all right. Uh, first of all, there's overmethylation and undermethylation. We find that zinc deficiency is in 90% of the people that we see with a severe mental problem, regardless of what kind of problem it is, whether it's autism, a behavior disorder, bipolar disorder, et cetera. We, we find that B6 deficiency is important in probably 30% of them and not the others. And um, um, pyrrole disorder, which is a disorder of, that has to do with oxidative overload. It's a marker for oxidative overload. And uh, it seems like every condition we've studied there's a high degree of brain inflammation and, and brain oxidative stress. Um, so we focus on, on just a, a small number of neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and the NMDA receptor, which is getting more and more important in neuroscience. And so Can you we, say that again? MMDA receptor? NMDA uh, system, which is now known to be extraordinarily important in memory in obsessive compulsive disorder, and in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And, and so what is the deficiency there? Well, it's a matter of whether you have too much or too little activity at that receptor. It's a glutamate receptor. If you have too little, too little uh, glutamate activity at that receptor, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a marker for certain types of schizophrenia. And if you have too much, that's a, that that's a, has a tendency for, uh, that's associated with undermethylation. And, and these people have a problem with, uh, they're addictive and they're, they have a certain, uh, their brain doesn't function quite right. And uh, there's now great new studies showing that there are treatments you can give that can help people with uh, even heroin or cocaine addictions because they can now sort of uh, make that system work better and to give people the ability to, to break these, these addictions. Okay, so there's so many different components. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the show. There are so many different aspects that you cover in Nutrient Power. But the, the bottom line is discovering what your deficiencies are and addressing those deficiencies, spirit, mind, and body, right? That you, know, you figure out what they are and you give the body what it needs. A little bit more than that. We, the biggest surprise I had was that uh, I used to think that deficiencies were the big problem and all we had to do is identify what a person was low in and, and supplement it. And what I learned to my surprise, to my great surprise, was that the greatest mischief is caused by people, by nutrients that because of genetics are in overload. So we have to identify which nutrients are too high and which are too low, especially the ones that really impact brain function and then we normalize them. And you normalize. Okay. So for those of you who'd like a copy of the book, whether you're watch, listening on the radio or later on, you're going to be watching on YouTube and or if you're on Facebook Live, be the seventh caller or texter, 407-373-5959. I said that this is a lot more. We're just dipping our toe 
on this. So if you regulate your nutrients as well as remove the toxic overload, which is what I'm hearing you say, then these mental disorders could go away. Uh, you could, in, in some cases, they can go away. It depends on the situation. Like with autism, that's a developmental disorder, and we really don't have a good way of, of making that go away for most people. And the same is true of uh, anything that I consider an epigenetic disorder. There are some disorders that involve a permanent change in gene expression, and that includes schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, I think autism for sure, post-traumatic stress disorder. But we can usually, even for them, we can usually give them a better, a better quality of life and, and help them quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there are the, the more simple disorders where many, we have many cases of complete recovery. And that would be behavior disorders, ADHD, and most types of depression. Very good. Very good. Okay. So we're going to shift gears. Bill, thank you so much for this. I'm, I'm, I want you to hold, stand by here because I, I'm, I want to introduce Del Billis. He's the founder and uh, chairman of Liberty HealthShare. And every time he comes on the show, he listens to what's going on and he always offers such great insight. For those of you who know how much I love Liberty HealthShare, I'm a member as well as uh, so grateful to them for becoming a sponsor. Thank you so much, Del Billis, for, for being a part of and a partner of the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. What a pleasure to be with you, Lillian. And I'm so enjoying this conversation today. Yeah. Six years ago, I made a change in my life mm -hmm. uh, because I really did believe our food chain was tainted. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I changed the, the, the way I would eat primarily because of my type 2 diabetes. Uh, and I've always believed in supplementation. Mm -hmm. I really am grateful uh, for Dr. Walsh's uh, advisory here. Mm -hmm. uh, that it needs to be uh, dealt with or looked at uh, in balance uh, so that we're really addressing those areas of nutrition and supplementation in a way that's most advantageous for us. So I'm going to go find the book, Dr. Walsh. Thank you for that input. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is amazing. Dr. Walsh, what, what would you like to say to Dale? Well, for one thing, we've learned uh, the, there's individuality in, in diet. For example, uh, there are some people who thrive on a vegetable diet, and there are others that thrive on a protein diet and, and really need to avoid too much green leafy vegetables. These mm -hmm. are the overmethylated people who, who get worse if they have too much folic acid. So we, it's a matter of trying to identify who you are biochemically, and, and everyone's a little different. It's amazing. Can you well, think it goes about to it? show that we're all individualized creatures of God? Yes, that's yes. right. Not one size does not is exactly. does not fit all, Thank and you. that's what I love about Liberty HealthShare. For those of you, I've been bragging about Liberty HealthShare now for a while. For those of you who would like to learn more, it's eight five 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 eight Liberty or go to libertyhealthshare.org. Dale, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and always bringing some insight. Can you share anything that's going on in the healthcare industry now that open enrollment is gone, uh, done, but still it's open with Liberty HealthShare? Uh, indeed, in fact, we're not subject to the open enrollment period, so folks can join us at any month in the course of the year. So if there's buyer's remorse, <laughs> we just think people need to consider healthcare sharing as a part of the mix of their decision making as to how to best meet their own healthcare costs and their healthcare needs. Yeah. So folks can join us any month they wish. Yeah, and with Liberty HealthShare, you guys are definitely not one size fits all because you allow people their individual choice, their freedom to choose what kind of, of health care they're going to opt for. Because for me, I do really well in the holistic and uh, the um, functional integrative community. Well, other person might be do better in allopathic, and that's a choice Liberty HealthShare has made for everybody. Well, we <laughs> really want to empower the individual to take charge and in, can be in control of the care of their own health. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, what's, uh, that's what's key. Uh, and so it just gives that level of, uh, of individual choice uh, to the uh, consumer. Uh, that takes care of the, of the health issues that they uh, encounter themselves. 
Absolutely, absolutely. That's Liberty Health Share. You can call them today at 855 585 4237, and that's libertyhealthshare.org. Today's book is Nutrient Power Heal Your Biochemistry and Heal Your Brain. And we're going to continue our conversation with Bill Walsh, PhD, and Del Billis, Chairman and Founder of Liberty Health Share, when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. Actually, we're chatting right now on Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show, and we'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, so we are live on Facebook Live here at Lillian's Radio Show. So for those of you who have any questions, feel free to ask. But can you imagine, Dale, the amount of money that we would save from just the side effects alone of these psychotropic medications? It, it is astonishing. Uh, and the detrimental effects in, in every uh, area of our health, uh, that, uh, that, that, that just the trickle-down effect. Uh, of those uh, 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 poisons in many cases. Yes. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm so delighted uh, that you're giving attention uh, and highlighting the, those issues. No, and it started off as a prison ministry. Can you imagine? Uh, that's fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm thrilled to uh, have a chance to meet you, Dr. Walsh, at least here uh, by way of uh, video. Uh, and uh, grateful for both your ministry and your passion to help improve people's health. And I'm grateful for your work of improving health care because I travel to a lot of countries and we are not the best country with respect to health care, as you know. And I see people who other, other countries like Australia, uh, Norway, France, England, and they have a better health care system than we do. In other words, they have availability of high quality health care quickly, uh, regardless of whether you have any money, which I think is beautiful. Right. It's so affordable with Liberty Health Share as well. I, 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 thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the methylation, undermethylated, overmethylated. This is so confusing, yeah. Bill. Um, I was diagnosed with MTHFR, and I got it from both my mother and my father. I'm not but surprised I, having, uh, having talked to you. Uh, you do appear to be an undermethylated person. <laughs> 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 Tell me more. Well, it's, it's uh, an MTHFR is an enzyme that's part of the methylation uh, biochemistry. And if people who have SNP mutations and you have, uh, do you have, are you homozygous or heterozygous? Do you have one copy or two of the MTHFR? I think I have the worst. Uh, and I, I wanted to send you my, my, my SNP, my um, DNA to see if you, because I'm really confused about all of this and what one should eat. You know, Dale, you know, I talk about healthy eating, but I can't, I, I, what I understand and what I've adjusted is I don't take any folic acid or anything with folic acid. Can you share a little bit about that, Bill? I think that's probably the right thing for you to do. Uh, uh, people who are, have the MTHFR uh, are undermethylated. One of the ways to improve methylation is to give them folic acid and B12. However, it, folic acid has an epigenetic effect that we've learned about 10 years ago. It knocks neurotransmission down. It knocks your serotonin activity down. It's a serotonin reuptake promoter. So if you have any tendency for depression or anxiety or obsessive compulsive disorder, and you are undermethylated, even if you got the MTHFR Hold that thought. Hold that thought. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voice. Okay. 407 373 5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott radio show where I'm surrounded with wonderful men, Dr. Bill Walsh and Dale Billis of Liberty Health Share. I'm always excited to see Dale Billis. If it weren't for Liberty Health Share, I'm telling you, the show would not be with us anymore. So please go to whenyouneedafriend.com and check out different ways that you can support Liberty Health Share. One of them is to learn about informed choice and learn more about the Affordable, Affordable Care Act exempt uh, option where you can exercise your freedom. So um, let's talk a little bit about that, Dale, and how affordable it is to make this choice, to make this switch from insurance that you have no control over where you go 
to Liberty HealthShare, where you put the power back and you give us the freedom to choose where we want to go and make it affordable. We pay each other's medical bills and share those costs together in our like-minded community of faith and values at half the cost of conventional health care. And I submit to you the reason for that is, is because we're paying each other's bills. That's right. We have a buy-in for the actual cost of health care. It's our money at stake. It's our pockets and the pockets of our fellow members. And that just by its very nature tends to uh, cause people to conserve the uh, expenditure of health care dollars as opposed to just uh, uh, not care about what those expenses are. So when our members are standing at the counter with their ID card, reviewing the treatment plan and evaluating the costs uh, and eliminating those things that are duplications or unnecessary, uh, the reason for that is, is because it's our money. And that's a key principle in the arena of healthcare. Yes, yes. And who can become a member at Liberty HealthShare, Dale? Because I, you know, Bill Walsh was talking about prison ministry and how the prisoners need, you know, this, this, this guidance and, you know, to learn what is deficient in their body and how to improve it when they're coming out of jail and maybe don't even have insurance or don't know what to do when it comes to health care. Well, there's a tab on our website, uh, Do I Qualify?, uh, mm-hmm. And it's essentially a targeted towards those that are health aware, health conscious, uh, want to take responsibility for the care of their health, don't abuse drugs or alcohol uh, or use tobacco, uh, mm-hmm. and agree with our set of shared beliefs. Now, they're there on our website. Folks can review them, but, but they're centered around the belief that we're here on earth to help another person mm-hmm. whenever they're in need. And so we've turned that principle into a solution for healthcare where my money every month goes to another person who has medical bills. And then should I have expenses? That same group is there to pay my costs. So it's mutual, it's supportive, uh, and it's community-based. Absolutely. And the number that you can call is 855-58-LIBERTY. That's 855 855- 585-4237, libertyhealthshare.org is where you can go this information. You know, it was, it was difficult for me to make this transition two and a half years ago, and it was the best decision I ever made. And to have you guys as sponsors of my show is just a dream come true, Dale. Thank you so much. Well, it's our honor to do so uh, because, again, we're uh, n- not for purposes of exclusion. We're health conscious because it arises out of our shared value that our bodies are temples. We're created beings, uh, and we have an obligation morally and spiritually to care for our bodies and care for our health. And so our focus is uh, on uh, really managing, directing, and controlling the care of our health. It's not about the cost of insurance. It's about what is the cost associated with maintaining my health being proscriptive, proactive, uh, preventative, uh, et cetera, because that's really where the focus needs to be. Yes. And as we talk about that, many of the guests on my show, or what I say, all of the guests on the show are focused on living the life of your dreams and creating what it is that we want for ourselves. And Nutrient Power, be the seventh caller or texter, 407-373-5959. We talk about that with some tweaking and finding out that we have deficiencies that certain foods may or may not agree with us. Can you imagine, Dale, the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars you can save each year just because people are making informed choices for their body? Well, I love your emphasis, Dr. Walsh, that it's very individualized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that really goes to our principle uh, that in order to control costs in healthcare, we need to focus on the management and control of the care of our health. Uh, and we believe we have the God-given right to do that. Uh, and so the, the kind of support and education uh, and guidance that you give in that regard, uh, I'm so grateful for. Because if we unleash in America uh, that awareness 
uh, that we're not relying on the government. We're not relying on some third party to take care of us and make decisions about our care. Rather, we're going to be responsible for that about ourselves. It'll transform the yeah. healthcare system in America today. Would you like to say anything to that, uh, Bill? Well, just that uh, we, we, are, we are training doctors to do this. We now have more than 630 doctors and psychiatrists who are now doing this kind of treatment, nutrient therapy. And basically there's an element of rescue in what we do. We're trying to rescue people who have difficulties, sometimes severe difficulties. And it, it's uh, sort of inspiring to us to see people get better and, uh, and, and to hear doctors tell us that now they can help doctors they couldn't help before. Yeah. We're doing our next training in, uh, in, in, in April in, in Illinois. Uh, and uh, we're just, it's just growing and growing. We're, we're going to have a thousand doctors around the world doing this, uh, I think, within two years. And I'm hoping for even more. I'm hoping for even more because I think everybody should be required to know this information. So let's go back real quick, Bill, and talk about what do we need to know about depression, anxiety, because we're, we're coming towards the end of the show. And I said this at the beginning that we would not be able to talk about everything today, but just dip our toe. Can you just bring us up to date really quickly and say, what do we need to know about that pill that we're taking? And what can we do to empower ourselves to learn this new truth about our health and changing the way that our body um, accepts whatever food that we're taking or what our deficiencies are? I think what we need to do is find out who we are biochemically. If a person has a significant depression or anxiety, I think the best thing to do would be to go to a doctor who knows how to do this and how to identify what type of depression you have, what kind of diet you need, what kind of, of, uh, of general therapy you need naturally. Mm -hmm. And it might include things like we might find somebody has an uh, overload of uh, mercury or lead. Uh, there's a lot of individuality. And then uh, basically correct these problems and try to rescue them from, uh, from some of the, 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 the problems that they're enduring. Um, it works really well. I think we, uh, our outcome studies show that we're about 85% successful in, um, in, in helping people with depression and anxiety based on reports from them and their doctors. And there's no pill that can offer that kind of results. No pill that no, can offer 85% success. We're not opposed to psychiatric medication. I know uh, drugs have helped hundreds and thousands sure, of people. Sure. However, there's a better way to do it. And I think the problem is these are foreign molecules that are powerful in the brain and change a person's brain and maybe personality. Uh, I think the answer is to normalize the brain and not put in foreign molecules. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Dale, last word. What do you think of that? Uh, I, it, it, again, is indicative of the need <laughs> to pay attention and be focused on the individual care of one's health. And that's what we do at Liberty HealthShare is empower the individual consumer, the patient, to make those choices and decisions for themselves. And then we share those costs together person to person uh, on the basis of freedom and choice. Uh, and that's what thrills me about this conversation today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Del Billis, for, for everything that you're doing, not only for the show, but for everybody. For everybody that wants to learn this new truth and walk away from your insurance and become part of Liberty HealthShare, go to libertyhealthshare.org. So thank you so much, Dale. And Bill Walsh, can you come back so we can talk a little bit more about each individual depression? Would you do that? Oh, we could do that. We could talk about autism, schizophrenia, anything you like. We will do it. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And to you, we're going to continue our conversation off the air at Lillian's Radio Show, Facebook.com at Lillian's Radio Show. Thank you so much. And now you know this new truth. What will you do? Please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day, best day ever. ever. Good job. Good job. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are on Facebook Live, just we'll join the conversation. If you have any questions for Dr. Walsh, you're welcome to, to ask. Um, there's so much that you go over and that you've learned. Has it been difficult for you to get people to say, I understand that we're not against the pill. I'm not against the pill either. 
But before taking that pill, what can I do to change the outcome? Like uh, Del Bellis used to be a smoker and he had diabetes and he made a change that completely changed the diabetes and he's no longer smoking. He's and, still alive. and he's still alive. Exactly. So what can you say? I mean, what can we do ourselves to, what, what are some of the tests that we can do to know if we are, you said already that we can't do a B6 deficiency, but what are some of the symptoms of B6 deficiency? Well, there's many. Uh, B6 is involved. It's, it's the major cofactor in the synthesis of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. So if you have too little, if you happen to have a genetic disorder, uh, which a lot of people have with really low B6 levels, that can cause a lot of problems in your brain. And um, it's very easy to correct. And it only takes really a couple of weeks to normalize your B6 level if you happen to be one of these people born with B6 deficiency. But that's only one of seven uh, impossible imbalances. Okay. And, uh, it, and it's, a lot of people don't have that problem. It depends, like for example, you said you have the MTHFR. Yes. That means you're undermethylated, which is fine because most people of high accomplishment, most great athletes, most, uh, most doctors, uh, successful executives are undermethylated because it gives them some uh, perfectionism and, 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 and it's just inborn in them. Uh, the negative is that about 20% of people with undermethylation are prone to depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. and, and some serious problems. And we can help them in their case by, by improving their methylation. So it's individual. So you see, I, I, this is, when I was looking at your book last night, I was thinking, okay, well, I don't suffer from depression. I don't have anxiety. And I think maybe I do, and I deal with it in a different way. I deal with it with over-preparing. I deal with it with, you know, different ways. So I don't let anxiety rule me. I kind of take it over. Right. There, I, there are, it's, the, the imbalance can come in mild, moderate, and severe. Got it. And, and most people that have it are, are mild and they can do uh, strategies like you've done to, to help you uh, avoid problems. Now I'm severely undermethylated. I found out when I brought my first bunch of criminals fresh out of Stayfield to Carl Pfeiffer and he made me go through the testing and I learned all what my chemistry was. And uh, he, he gave me a nutrient program to take for my undermethylation. And well, I've never been to my knowledge, I've never been depressed or anxious. Yeah. Uh, however, I used to have migraine headaches and I used to have severe allergies. I, I hated Illinois in August and September because of the ragweed. I haven't had either one since I started taking uh, methionine and SAMI and these other things that are great for me. Uh, I wasn't depression, but it made the life better for me. Okay, so I see SAMI when I go to the, you know, to the you know, store and they have something called Sam E. Is that the same thing or is that, or is that just the name they gave that pill, that um, supplement? Well, all of our methylation comes from methionine, uh, from diet and methionine in the body becomes SAMI, the sort of activated methionine. And that's the methyl donor for about 80 really important reactions in your, in your biochemistry. And uh, the beauty of SAMI is that it's uh, somewhat unstable and it gives, up its, it gives up its methyl rather easily, and that's why it's so effective. It's the major methylator in the body. Okay, but it's, it's, there's a brand called SAMe. It's a chemical. It is it's a, a chemical. chemical. Chemical, and it's manufactured by different people. It, it, was, it wasn't until 1990 that SAMe was available to people, and we Got started it. using it on certain schizophrenics and others and uh, it's more effective uh, than using methionine because your body has to convert the protein methionine into SAMI for it to work. So when somebody has the MTHFR from both parents, which is, and I'll, and I'll send you, if you don't mind, I can send you my, my DNA to see, because I'm really puzzled right now. You know, I eat a whole food plant-based uh, diet. And, um, and so I think I'm doing the right thing for me but then when I was taking my, my B vitamins, I found out they were folate and folic, folic acid. And I eat lots of greens. So I'm confused. Should I eat greens? Should I not eat greens? Should I avoid any folic? What, how, how, what, what do you suggest for me? I suggest if life is going beautifully for you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
<laughs> but if you think you, if you find yourself a little bit too obsessive compulsive or whatever, if you want to make life easier in some ways, you might, you might limit that because as keep in mind is lowering serotonin and dopamine activity because it's epigenetic. It has a powerful effect on epigenetics. It folic acid would improve your methylation. And for most people, it's a good thing to take folic acid if you're under methylated, but not if you've got a serotonin problem. Mm -hmm. Then it's like poison for you. And, so, and you can't just take SAMI. You, SAMI, for some people, some undermethylated people should not take SAMI. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of lab tests you can do, to it, especially one by Doctors Data Incorporated, mm -hmm. where they, they can, you can find out, uh, look at all different parts of your methylation cycle and get an idea of what you need to do. It's fairly complicated, but I think if you, if you look into it, you're going to dive into this and really enjoy learning a little bit more about yourself. I do. I do. I, I mean, this whole show is about learning. This is like a classroom for me and you guys are my teachers. I'm, I'm learning along with my listening and viewing friends. And so here's, here's my question to you. Um, when it comes to, if, if I were to look at my biggest issue health wise, I would say I can't stay asleep long enough. Like I would love, like my husband, he'll sleep and he'll say, okay, eight hours. Okay. I'll wake up at seven or I'll wake up at eight. No, I'm up at five. I'm up at four, you know? And I had mentioned that to you that sometimes I'm up at three 30, you know, and that's when I do my best writing. What can I do to help me stay asleep? Well, what we find is people who are under methylated, like I'm sure you are, uh, there's one natural uh, nutrient that seems to really help them sleep and get a good night's sleep, and that's inositol. What? Inositol. I've never read heard up, of that. Read up on inositol. It's a natural. How do you spell that? I n o s i t o l, and it's only effective for undermethylated people, and and it, and it's really helpful for people who have sleep problems. If you have trouble falling asleep, you you would you would take it. Uh, 30 minutes before you want to get to sleep. If you have trouble staying asleep, take it right at bedtime. And the standard uh, published dosages are seem kind of high. They're about um, uh, between 1,500 and 2,000 milligrams. But we actually get quite a bit of inositol in our diet. But that's, that's just one example of, of how you can help a particular problem with nutrient therapy you know it's there's so many different nuances like for example with mthfr you have to have the the, the um you just make a switch because i was whenever i took b12 b, b vitamins i couldn't sleep that was the folic acid was affecting your serotonin serotonin is associated with melatonin associated with sleep so you're one of those undermethylated people that needs to avoid folates folate supplements well, well, which is folate supplements is folic, right? Folic acid. Folic acid, folinic acid, or methylfolate. They all cause your serotonin to dive down. They help your methylation if you're undermethylated, but God help you if you're, a, if you're a low serotonin person, if you have depression or anxiety related to that neurotransmitter. So what I'd like to do, you know, and I, and I don't want to put you on the spot, so you don't have to answer. You can just think about it. I would like to take every single group and do a series with you do a series of under methylated over methylated uh pyral pyral disorders and do like different shows on that because it, it's so confusing bill it is so confusing to us we really i think most people know that our body is speaking to us but because there's so much noise from commercialism yeah. the the pharmaceutical industry is telling us you know take this pill and it'll take away diabetes and it's basically an excuse to continue eating the way we're eating you know and and not changing what the body is asking us to change there's tremendous help, hope for the future. And the reason is that uh, neuroscience is advancing so fast. It hasn't reached clinical doctors yet, but the knowledge of how the brain functions, and a lot of it has to do with nutrient factors. Uh, the knowledge is right there. And uh, I think the problem is there's no money in this. I mean, everybody's trying to get the next billion dollar drug, yeah. uh, but the knowledge is there. We now, I believe we now know how to prevent how to prevent autism. I think we know how to prevent depression and, and schizophrenia and mental breakdowns. And we know how to prevent cancer. 
and no one's working on it because uh, even though we know exactly why cancer begins, what, how, the, how your DNA can be overwhelmed and cause it and develop a cancer stem cell, we know why it happens. There are lab tests you can do to identify if you're right on the verge of cancer, and we know how to avoid it if you need. I know, and, and it's sad. Doing it, everybody's trying to get again the the drug, the the medication that could that could you know, help people with cancer, but uh, it's better to uh, prevent it, and uh, we now know how to do that. And I think the future is very bright. The 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 neuroscience out there, for example, we started studying uh, bipolar disorder. And, and with respect to the new, with the, with the new science, and I, I believe we've discovered what it is and why people ha cycle from mania to depression and back. In fact, I just presented that at the American. Psychiatric can you share just in a nutshell bipolar disorder and what people can do to, to take their health back? Well, if, uh, if you have bipolar disorder, uh, we've learned that has to do with part of your brain losing the ability to have full voltages or potentials in, in your brain in your brain neurons and uh, we know what we have a good idea of why it why it strikes people around the age of 16 or 18 or 20 and uh, it really helps to understand what it is there have been so many mysteries about bipolar disorder about what's the cause why do people cycle why do what causes mania and why do they cycle into depression and then you know now we think we understand exactly why it's right there in new neuroscience Nobody's paying attention to it. Okay. And there's 6 million Americans with bipolar and suffering. So tell us what it is. And you were saying that, the, that the, it's the brain losing its voltage, but what can we do? Yeah, when you lose part of your brain, when, you, when a part of your brain loses voltage, it causes mania. It causes mania. And, and the mania gets worse and worse and worse until it gets to the point where it completely disables part of your brain. And part of your brain shuts down. We think it's the Rafe system, which is the serotonin system, and and uh, that we believe is why why what goes into a, a phase, and it's all it's all explained by by uh, mass transport of ions. It has a lot to do with ion channels and the whole new science related to glial cells. We have as many glial cells in our brain as we have neurons. And they partner with the neurons. And the science is just beautiful and exquisite. And it seems like nobody's paying attention to it with respect to helping people with these disorders. Okay, so, okay, yes. So the brain is, I, I, can, I can see logically why this happens. But what can we do? Because instead of taking lithium and taking all these different medications that take away their spirit, take away their personality, yeah. and... What can someone do that may be watching today that has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder? Is there a supplement? Is there a nutrient? Is there a way to eat that can help regulate the voltage in the brain? It depends on the individual. I mean, there are different kinds of, of, of there are phenotypes of bipolar. Not every bipolar person is the same. And in fact, that's why there are no major genes associated with bipolar. And that has to do with, with what causes that system to go bad. It causes your brain to develop this condition. Um, the, what we have done is we've, we've, we've now, I think, we, the book I'm writing and I'm about ready to publish, um, mm -hmm. it explains exactly what it is and what's wrong. Uh, we did not focus yet on, on the therapies to help people with this new information, but that's, that's the next step. Well, that's a huge step, and I'm looking forward to that happening. Um, so, but today, you know, when you're talking about B12, zinc, and copper, those three things are important to our body. Is there anything else that you can leave us with that we can start looking at as clues or a roadmap to our health, our mental health? Well, I think you need to look at make sure that you've got a, a quality diet that you have nutrient-dense uh, food that you're eating, and you need to avoid toxics. You need to, you, probably number one, if you wanted to really improve your life, live longer, not age as fast, I think the number one thing would be antioxidants. We now know why people age. We know, know why people develop diseases. It has to do with the integrity of your DNA. Your mm -hmm. DNA is nourishing every cell in your body every day. Mm -hmm. And your DNA tends to deteriorate with time. 
and it deteriorates mainly because of oxidative stress, which could be toxic materials, could be cosmic radiation, but basically your DNA deteriorates with time. And there are ways to protect your DNA. So I say antioxidants would be number one for everybody. Mm -hmm. With everything else, it's individual. Do you have a, a zinc deficiency? Do you have a B6 deficiency? Do you, you know, what are you, do you have methylation disorder? I think then it's really reacting to what your individual chemistry is. But the antioxidants, even things like vitamin C, vitamin E, N-acetylcysteine, selenium, there, there are a number of wonderful um, on wonderful antioxidants. And I think number one is zinc itself. I think everybody should make sure they should, they should have a zinc plasma test and, and make certain that they go through life with a proper amount of zinc because otherwise they, their DNA will deteriorate more quickly and, and they're more prone to diseases. A zinc plasma test. Yeah. Where do you get that? Um, most um, most um, laboratories do that test. Uh, there's a number of, of we get ours from LabCorp, which is the America's biggest uh, lab yeah. company. But you have to be sure that it's plasma because if they do serum zinc, you'll get to, probably get the wrong answer. Okay, so it's the plasma. Yeah, and I think That's... the way to really do this is go to a doctor, uh, a medical practitioner who knows about this and can you know order the tests. And then if you're if you're out of if you're if you're deficient in zinc or de depleted in zinc, uh, it's, it's really, it takes 60 days to normalize. Wow. So I think the answer is to, you know, perfect yourself in that respect. Do you know when you've had enough zinc? Um, for example, when I learned that I can reverse asthma through um, just um, not reverse asthma, but heal my body from the symptoms that I was experiencing of asthma with vitamin C. And so Dr. Uh, Andrew Saul of Food yeah. Matters and that vitamin guy, uh, that vitamin movie, um, he told me to take enough vitamin C to be symptom free or bowel tolerance, whichever the case might be. That's his little right. jingle. And so I take between 10,000 to 15,000 milligrams when I'm well of vitamin C. And everybody says, oh my God, that's too much. You're going to experience some side effects. Well, yeah, the side effects is diarrhea if I take too much. So I know what my level is. I've taken up to 60,000 of vitamin C when I'm feeling a scratchy throat or I've been exposed to someone or I'm traveling. And you know, I was just exposed to the flu and knock on wood, I'm good because I knew that I needed to do that. That well, is I, a side effect that I know. I, so, I, once, I once spent a day with the great Linus Pauling. Yes, uh, there and, you go. Uh, he told me he was getting not feeling happy about one thing. He had been taking 20,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, and he had to drop to 18,000 because of bowel tolerance. <laughs> you can't really get too much vitamin C, but you have to make sure it doesn't give you uh, nausea or some problem. So is there like uh, an awareness that you've had too much zinc? Uh, yeah, it's hard to get too much zinc. Uh, zinc is one of the safest metals in, in, in humanity. I used to do zinc vaporization experiments when I was a scientist, and the health, the health uh, people who were checking out the safety of all my experiments mm -hmm. said, well, don't worry about zinc. You can't hurt yourself with zinc. So you can't help your, hurt yourself. B6, you can't hurt yourself with that either. Uh, you could get, if you get too much, if you have, it depends on the person. Um, if a person genetically has enough B6, or some people might even have more than normal. If you get too much B6, two things happen. Number one, you start to get wild, crazy dreams. And number two, part of your skin loses sensation. It's called neuropathy. But the good news is every time, it, that's only happened to us about maybe 15 times out of 30,000 patients. And we gave zinc to most of these people uh, and B6 to most of these people. They work together. Um, after stopping the B6 for them, it just goes away and you're okay again. It's a, just a temporary inconvenience. Very good. Anything else? Like, I, I mean, we were talking about, what about B3 as in boy, B3, niacin? Niacin is extremely helpful for certain people. And now niacin itself has a ten, does a lot of things in the body. And it's special, especially helpful for schizophrenics <clears throat> especially if they're the kind that are, have auditory hallucinations and are hearing voices. Uh, niacin is, <coughs> is one of the best ways to, to fix that. 
we know that niacin has an epigenetic effect and we know exactly what it does. It tends to enhance, um, it, it tends to enhance acetylation of your, of your DNA and it tends to, to lower methylation of your DNA, which has a lot to do with, with all of your gene expression and, and really uh, of your, your well-being. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's powerful and is really helpful for some people and other people probably shouldn't take it. Depends on your individuality. So again, I think the, the key is um, if, if a person has a significant problem, I think they should see a, a medical practitioner that knows these things and knows how to, how to quickly identify what your biochemistry is and show you how to normalize your biochemistry. Okay. So we have Karen who asked the question. This is wonderful information. Thank you, Karen, for, for typing in your question. But, and you had mentioned also, um, Dr. Walsh, that you have, you're teaching doctors. You're, you're saying you want to teach a thousand psychiatrists and people and, and uh, doctors about this information, but my vision is much greater for you. My vision is like every doctor needs to go um, through this. This is well, my vision. Our, <laughs> Would that be? Our, our, that's our goal. We, we, I had originally tried to convince the world of this. I, I would go to, I went to the, I gave talks at the American Psychiatric Association. I talked to the United States Senate. I've, I've talked to the surgeon, presented the surgeon general, and nobody seems, they all say, oh, that's wonderful, it's exciting, it's interesting, and then nothing happens. Yeah. So I decided that I'm going to go, uh, if I had a bumper sticker, it would say, when the people lead, the leaders will follow. So I decided just let's train a thousand doctors, which is probably going to be more than a million, possibly a million patients uh, experiencing this, and it'll just be a movement that'll grow. So that's why we're doing that. Anyway, we... So where we, can we find doctors. these doctors? Where can we... Do you have a Our list website. of doctors? Okay, so if you go yes, to... Do. If you go to walshinstitute.org, walshinstitute.org, where do we find your doctors? Well, you'll find a, a tab there for resources. Okay, I'm on resources. And, it's, and, and you just put in your... You can just put in where your location is and it'll tell you the four or five doctors nearest you. So if, when I click on resources, it dropped down to clinical resources, and there's also in the press and links. And so if I do, oh, there it goes. It says clinical. Yeah, if, if it would have said find a practitioner, that would have been more clear. Okay, so it's clinical resources, find a practitioner. And so just enter the information there, and you have some doctors in Miami, Jacksonville, Tampa, and I'm going to find them, and yeah. perhaps maybe we can work together here. Um, in Jacksonville, the show airs in Jacksonville, so I'm going to reach out to these doctors and mm -hmm. find out a little bit more so that we can get, get them rewarded. I mean, because, you know, it, it is wonderful to see a doctor that steps outside the box. And yeah, We have 330 in the USA alone, 630 worldwide. We have doctors doing this in, in 28 different countries. And uh, so we're going to be training another 80 or 90 uh, in, in Evanston, Illinois in April. And okay. so we're inviting doctors who would be interested in learning how to do this. We'd be happy to, we have a four day program. We've, we've got a nice four day program and we assist them before and then after the training to help them establish this into their medical practice. And is there a flyer that we as your voice, the people who have heard you today, can bring it to our doctors and say, okay, I want you to go to this. <laughs> yeah, we have um, beautiful brochures that, are, that, are, that advertise this to doctors and to the public. Okay, so where can we find this? Walshinstitute.org. Yes, but wh which, which tab? Um, I think you'll find it if, you know, right there, the, the, the flyer, or if you contact my staff, Okay. either Dana... Zingaroni or Sue Hanegraaff and the staff, they, they, they have... Um, there is an education. There's an education tab. So yes. practitioner education is where we need to go and tell our doctors that we're going to fire them unless they become more um, patient-centered because we, yeah. we really need to take our health back, Dr. Walsh. Thank you, Bill, for everything that you're doing. And I am... I know that this is going to be one of many shows with you because I, I need to, for me, I need to dumb this down even more. I, and I would love a class for us, for us to understand your research and, and so that we can empower ourselves and say, okay, I'm not going to go to a doctor 
that hasn't taken this course. And, and I want to encourage all of you, um, ACIM um, is a, um, a group that you could go and learn yourself, ACIMconnects.org com or dot org I'm, i can't remember off the top but dr lee cowden's been on my show many times .org. and that is it dot org and that is how i met bill walsh and he was a presenter at the last event and let me tell you what a great find thank you so much bill for everything that you're doing i hear you even oh, if you. the people in congress or the government don't hear you i hear you and i know that my listening friends who are the smartest healthiest um, listeners and followers a, a person could ever hope to partner with, I, I know that we all hear you, that there are things we can do. So thank you so much. Well, great. My pleasure. Yes. And for those of you who are watching this, whether it's on uh, facebook.com forward slash at Lillian's radio show or later on at YouTube, um, just know that the only way the show will grow is if you share this video with someone you know who's dealing with whatever health issue, uh, mental disorder. Because you know, you think of mental disorder, you don't think of depression. You don't think you think of schizophrenia, or you no. think of all these major. But there's different levels. You know, not being able to sleep more than five hours to me that's a that's a huge thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to the store today and I'm gonna get some inositol, inositol right? Yeah, and 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 we you'll know within three weeks, and if it doesn't help you, uh, don't take it. Uh, <laughs> but about eighty percent of undermethylated people with a sleep problem tell me that it's effective. Very good, and I take fifteen milligrams, fifteen hundred milligrams. Mm. Yeah. 1,500 milligrams is what you suggest. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. Okay. So share this video and like it and make sure that we grow together. And until next time, I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop our YouTube, our Facebook stream. So thank you so much. I'm going to stop that now. Stop the live stream. And thank you, Dr. Walsh, for everything that you're doing. I'm going to stop the recording now.